Welcome to another episode of Unleashing the Future of Work. And today I am with a very, very, very dear friend of mine and an amazing guest. And we're going to be talking about the remote work revolution and how do you manage your career as a remote worker? Laurel Farr is a distributed operations consultant that collaborates with the world's top remote friendly companies to strengthen virtual communication, streamline streamline digital processes and develop a ton of long distance management strategies for them to make sure that they're effectively leading their man, their distributed teams. She also writes about remote work for several online publications and education platforms and advises US governments, business conferences and industry associations on how to share remote work resources with their audiences to stimulate economic growth. She's a wonder woman and I've had the lovely chance of talking with her in the past and I just love her energy. You all are going to feel it here as well. So without further ado, I would love to welcome Laurel Farr to our Unleashing the Future of Work show. Thank you so much, Tim. I'm excited to be here. I, you know, I'm excited to have you here. You're amazing. You know, by the way, I want to show love to everyone that's tuning in. Make sure you mention in the comments so I can shout you out where you're tuning in from. I know we usually have people tuning in from Ghana, Nigeria, the UK. So show love in the comments. But with that said, Laura, I would love to just have you talk a little bit about more of how did you get to doing the work that you do in the remote work space? Mm. Well, I actually took my own team remote as an operations manager 13 years ago. So I've been remote since then, before it was cool, yeah. uh, before it was a, a national and international <laughs> conversation, uh, and have been loving it. And it was actually as an operations manager that that really convinced me about the power of remote because mm. the employee retention benefits were so strong and the productivity costs and the saved real estate and equipment costs. Like it just made me able to do my job better. And so mm. um, that's really when I got into the corporate side of it. And, uh, but I didn't become a consultant until about a decade later. And then that's when I, got a new job with a fully distributed company. It was a startup and it was a remote work model just like I had always had, but it was a really, really, really unhealthy culture. And yeah. so they were doing remote work wrong. And that was like the same time as IBM and Yahoo were retracting their policies. And so I'm an organizational development <laughs> nerd. And so I was like, wait a second, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. How can a company really mm. feel confident that they're doing it the right way as opposed to the wrong way because you kind of you just don't know what you don't know and mm. um so yeah that's when i started getting into interviewing and analyzing every single remote work model that i could get my hands on that's um how i built my network of of remote friendly companies and other thought leaders and now here we are with a um specialized consulting firm that yeah. we deal exclusively with remote work and and we work all over the world and absolutely love it yeah, you know, and I can only imagine it's probably incredibly busy for you right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it has been um, an unexpected month of growth, let's say that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? And But let's talk about culture, right? Because I think you, you mentioned something. There's a specific culture to remote work that, you know, you it's different than the traditional always encouraging your people to come to work on site. And, you know, I lead a distributed team within Guide. And, you know, I've, I've been learning and we've developed processes and we're developing a framework for what our culture looks like. But I would love for you to talk about, you know, how should leaders be thinking about developing culture in a remote work environment? You know, it's ironic because so many leaders come to me with that question of, well, there's mm. no way that we can uh, digitize a culture like that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, my, my defense usually is if your culture is proximity based, mm. it's not a culture. Like that's mm. not, that's not the solution, right? Um, a culture is about human to human connection. It's about that feeling of recognition and ap appreciation that I'm a part of something and I don't necessarily need to be in a specific place in order mm. to fulfill that role and to be part of that mission. Um, my work is something that I do and not somewhere that I go. And, and that's a culture. It's the personality of your team. And that personality is comprised of people, not 
proximity. Um, so that's what we talk about often with the leaders is how do you transition that culture so that people feel valued and recognized without, you know, that mm. pat on the back and that handshake and those very sensory experiences, you know, birthday cake in the break room, all of that good stuff. Like how, how do you make them feel recognized and appreciated as a person with different channels? And, you know, that's exactly what we're doing as a society right now is we have um, mm. our habits of building relationships with friends and with loved ones and with neighbors that are all proximity based. And so this is an exercise that we're going through and that we can all relate to right now is mm. how do we build relationships in different ways, in different channels, and moving much towards a more communication-based form mm. of appreciation, right? Like we're saying things, we're making time for conversations, we're making yeah. time for video calls. And and that's really what it is in remote work as well as saying, we're going to show you um, mm. with with our actions and our words, how much you mean to this company and how critical you are. You know, it's so fascinating you're saying you're saying that because you know the 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 biggest the biggest statement everyone's saying now is be safe and healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Due to what's going on with COVID nineteen, and it's a uh, that's a direct uh, correlation to now where I think we're reverting back to uh, a, a time where we're valuing mindfulness, family, health, togetherness more than ever before. You know, pre COVID nineteen. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I mean, this is a, uh, we've been and been very fortunate to enjoy um, what mm -hmm. we'll call a season of plenty for about a decade, right? Like jobs has been grow have been growing, economy has mm -hmm. been strong. Um, people have been very entitled to take risks with their, with their jobs and with their businesses. Um, and it, all in a good way. I, I don't say entitled in a, in a bad way. I mean, this is great. This is where innovation yeah. comes from, right? Um, but there's highs and there's lows and and the season of plenty turns into a season of need. And during this, the seasons of need, it really becomes uh, a time where we self-reflect and we say, what are our necessities? And mm. we're, again, we're doing that in, in our personal lives. What, what are the bare minimum, the, the, the things that are worth preserving and focusing on, um, you know, with our finances, with our relationships, with our yeah. families. Um, but then in our businesses as well, um, what are the processes that we need to keep, you know, this isn't necessarily a time for risk. So what do we need mm. to do in order to keep the lights on? And how can we leverage remote work? We're all working from home now. Uh, if we're knowledge-based workers and, and yeah. knowledge-based companies, how can we optimize this? How can we leverage this for the future? So it's making do with what we have and just being more resourceful. Mm. So, you know, let's talk about career management as a remote worker. Right. Because you and I have talked about this before that now when you're remote, you know, often remote workers see opportunities that pass them up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. you're not as close to, let's say, the leadership team in the physical proximity based location. You know, what are some of your thoughts on how workers who have transitioned into remote work and they're thinking about their careers or they've lost their jobs during this you know, pandemic? How do you, how should they think about managing their careers as a remote worker? You know, there's two different answers to that question. Um, one is if they are um, currently in a job and it's a hybrid model, like you were saying, that there's some people on site and some people off site. Mm. There is there is a lot of danger to that um, because traditional management mm. structures are are historically very sensory based. We can see people being productive, right? Um, and we were literally mm. taught this in college, especially in my generation, like this is how you get a promotion. You're the first one to arrive, you're the last one to leave so that they can see that you're a hard worker. And wow. yeah, I mean, this it, it's very just ingrained into our leadership styles. And um, so if you are an offsite worker and everybody else has this benefit of proximity and visibility in order to mm. be considered for a promotion, it becomes a major discrimination case. Um, that we have out of sight, out of mind, and and mm. as such, career stagnancy is is very very common and very dangerous for remote workers. Um, but now that's changing. Now everybody is working off site, and so we're having an opportunity to really stabilize and level the playing field and say this is the 
I, I don't want to use the phrase the new normal because that's yeah. so overused right now. <laughs> right? And it's it, it's not the new normal. Um, right? but it's, it's, we've been remote. You, I know you and I, we're remote You know, leaders, yeah. right? We do everything we do uh, in terms of our business remote. Right. Well, and not every single business is going to go remote overnight. Yeah, I mean, that's completely that's unrealistic. And that would actually hurt our economy even more. So yeah. what we need to do is say, what are the elements that we are learning right now that mm. we should carry through into the new normal, such as asynchronous communication mm. and non-sensory supervision and productivity tracking um, that's results space. Like there's so many elements of remote work that will actually um eliminate and dissolve mm. the term remote work and we'll just have adopt the elements of remote work into work so remote work will that. just become work yeah i love that laurel i love that laurel you know yeah. so i want to show love to our amazing audience we have Amani who's tuning in from the Bay Area, California. Shout out to Amani. Yes. We have many tuning in from Vancouver, British Columbia. Claren, what's up from Oakland, my friend? I am an Oaklander as well. Shout <laughs> out to you, Clarence. We have Didier who's tuning in from Fort Worth, Texas. You know, Clarence is mentioning what software are we using to conduct this interview with subtitles? It's StreamYard. Check it out. You would love it, Clarence. Gina is saying 100%. The current workforce is all about connection, and we are reverting back to those timeless principles, to your point, Lauren. Laurel. Um, Tomori is saying, hello, Tim Salau. I'm connecting from Nigeria. Shout out to you, Tomori. Thank you for tuning in. Gina is saying well-being is now part of success in this climate. So she definitely agrees with you, Laurel. Well-being, a focus on really thinking about how do we take the best of what remote work is showing us right now and bringing it to the core of what we just call work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, what we're seeing right now is Maslow's hierarchy of needs in mm. action, right? Like this is where we, again, we've had this season of plenty. We could take risks. We can focus on, um, you know, more frivolity. And then, yeah. but now it's even with our culture, like we, if we circle back and start talking about culture, you know, three months ago, two months ago, when I was consulting on culture development, it was mm. about like, how can we have retreats and parties and um, water cooler Slack channels? and stuff like that and and build that <laughs> sense of unity but yeah. now we've gone all the way down to the maslow's basic hierarchy of needs and now your people are bonding in the fact that they are all mm. just still employed together and so mm. they don't really need to have a party they're just celebrating that they have a job so that's what we're talking about like we're we, we're just basic right now like and yeah. that's and that's okay that's what we all need is we all just need to feel safe and secure and um connected with other people and so that as a leader that's where you can and should start is how do your people feel mm. not isolated how do they feel safe and secure and that a lot of that is just coming from communication and your gestures of communicating hey your jobs are not in danger or yeah you know, this is, these are the baselines that we need to meet in order to keep everyone's jobs. How can we work together to make that happen? And things like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, Laura, I love that. You know, you talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, I actually studied psychology at Texas Tech University and you're absolutely right. We're really at this point now where I think a lot of employees, a lot of workers in the, in the workforce are thinking about how can we, how can I ensure I can just take care of my family and survive? And I want to ask you, you know, cause I, you know, you know, as a leader in this space, do you think that there is, is opportunities for about how do you ensure your workers go back at level of self actualization um, in the working world or in the in your in your organization? I'm sorry, you actually cut out. Can you repeat just the last part really quickly? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You know, how do you think organizations can help? Like they can work with their uh, their employees to make sure that they can ladder up to that level of self actualization mm -hmm. in their work. Yeah. Well, this kind of circles back to what we were talking about before, right? That career development. How are we yeah. upskilling for the future of work? So right now, just communicate. Just make sure that yeah. people feel safe and connected, right? A lot of that's going to come from communication. A lot of that's going to come from software. But as mm. time progresses and we're able to start thinking a little bit bigger picture about our, our growth and our development, um, be thinking about well, you know, this this terrible phrase, the new normal. Um, yeah. What is the new normal going to be? 
And how yeah. am I going to prepare my workforce for that? Or how am I going to prepare myself for that? So again, if mm. we circle back and we say, all right, well, at a minimum, there's going to be elements of remote work that are pulled from um, this remote work world, the fully distributed, you know, very marketing, buzzy remote work world. And we're going to put those into the future, those yeah. asynchronous communication and, and, um, and things like that. So how, how do I need to upskill myself in order to prepare for that? And a lot mm. of that is going to be soft skill training. So mm. training yourself to be a self manager. This is a more autonomous environment, whether you're in the office or you're out of the office, there's just going to be a restructuring from consultants like me that are te telling your employers and your businesses how to allow for remote work. And a lot of that is results based and employee empowerment. So if we are empowering the employees, then you as the employees need to be prepared for that higher level of self-management. And that means mm. that you have discipline, you have proactivity, you mm. have empathy, you have communication, like you are prepared to manage yourself, to be mm. in charge of your own time, your own tasks, your own energy, um, and you are ready to be a self-manager. And, yeah. and so if we, the more that we can nurture those soft skills in our leaders and in our, our uh, employee and entry-level workforce, the better we're going to be off long-term. Laura, I love that. And we have so many people who are chiming in in the comments. David is saying, great point. Hadn't thought about that. You better preach it. He's loving what you're talking about. So he's really happy. <laughs> Amen to and hallelujah, said. David. <laughs> George is saying greens from the Bay Area. He's tuning in. You know, Dinesh is saying it's all about more about valuing people. Look at them as people and not just numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Michael, the CEO at ESG, is saying engage leaders and leadership teams translate to a remote model very, very easily because they already care about their workplace culture. You know, David is saying we don't need to have a party. We're just happy to have a job. Powerful. So he's quoting your statement about kind of how a lot of workers are now back into this. We're just saying full in, in this state of gratitude to your point. Yeah, Laurel. yeah absolutely. Um, we're, we're all just, we're all in this together and that's how we're mm. going to get through it is together. And that's what this is the future of work. I mean, that's why we're here talking about yeah. this, right? The, I think that the entire theme of the future of work, if we consider the different branches like remote work and artificial mm. intelligence and all of those different branches of, of future of work, I think that the centralized theme is em human empowerment, that yeah. we are taking away the, the tasks or the repetitive mindsets um, or the micromanagement mindsets, like all of these things that have dehumanized people or just yeah. not allowed them to fulfill their their human potential in in their jobs that's what we're taking away like hey guess yeah. what you don't have to sit here and do data entry for 10 hours at a time or <laughs> sit here at a, at a factory i mean i remember being a kid um like a little little kid you know yeah. four or five six years old watching mr rogers neighborhood and watching the factory workers that you know would move the crayon from here to here wow. and thinking that's somebody's job like wait a second that <laughs> they should be like thinking and designing and creative and yeah. like a machine could do that. Why are they, why are, why is a human doing that? And mm. I think that that's just like the entire future of work, right? Like we're just empowering people. You can be a self manager. Now you don't have to be under supervision. You don't have to be doing menial tasks. Like you can th do the one thing that machines and, and plants and animals can't mm. do. You get to think and design and create. And that's, that's what we're trying to do with the future of work is create the space for that to happen and you know that's why i love work, working in tech you know you know as you know as as i lead guide one of the things i'm learning is that you know i work with a team of amazing talented and, and brilliant people and i get to learn from them as much as they learn from me if anything and i think one of the biggest things that i encourage people is if you want to get into tech you know definitely make sure you're mindful of how can you how can you make sure you create a niche or a role for yourself where you're able to speak to your strengths your creativity and you're not in this role where you're just doing data entry work because I do believe, Laurel, to your point, that we're moving towards a future where we're going to see people using more of their creative intelligence versus having to act as if and process as if they're robots. Mm -hmm. And emotional intelligence, too. I mean, I get so many eye rolls from all of these managers when I get start coming in and talking about leadership training for remote work. <clears throat> 
Yeah. And then talking about things like empathy and communication. They're like, <laughs> oh, like this is work. I'm not in therapy, right? And I'm like, look, I get it. But we need to have, again, like this is leveling up the human factor. We need to collaborate as humans. Yes, we're working through tech, but we are still connecting as mm. humans to humans. And we have to really preserve the and strengthen those skills or else yeah. it's not going to work sustainably so yeah it's um yes there's there's the qualification the quantification of remote work and and mm. everything that we do as businesses yes it needs to meet the bottom line but we have to remember at the end of the day it's humans that are producing the work and so the more that we can treat humans as humans the more output and productivity they're going to have I love that. So I want to give a quick shout out to my boy, John Marty. Him and I are creating a course called Break Into Big Tech. Check out breakintobigtech.com. And we help people who are trying to level up in their careers and embrace creative intelligence, embrace you know the opportunities to work in tech. And the fact that we're moving towards a future now where technology is only going to permeate more and more into our digital processes and how we work. And we really help people who are interested in getting into tech on our Break Into Big Tech course. So check that out at breakintobigtech.com. Laurel, you know, the, the people are loving everything that you're saying. You know, Vernon saying, I've had a tough time transitioning into work from home. How can I sharpen my work from home acumen? Mm. Um, so this is going to circle back to kind of what we've been talking about, and I don't want to be too repetitive, but yeah. the more that you can realize that you are in control now, that kind of opens up your mindset to think, oh, well, yeah. if I don't like this, then I get to do something about it. Um, mm. And so it becomes this process of self-awareness, like what's not going well? Well, mm. Let me identify that. Like, am I having a slump in the afternoons? Do I feel disconnected from information? Am I feeling com constantly distracted? Like what's mm. not going well? And then what am I going to do about that? Um, again, when we work in office environments, there's just so much um, subconscious dependency on our context and on our environment. Mm. So somebody walks to the uh, conference room and that's a reminder that we have a meeting or our boss <laughs> walks behind us and we're like, oh, that's right like whoops i just fell into a rabbit hole i'm gonna get yeah. back on track or um man i'm tired and i'm uh, having a slump i'm gonna go over to the break room and see what's going on right like yeah. there's just so much that we do um but when we're alone all of a sudden it's we don't have an, any yeah. opportunity for any dependency so it, it has to fall back to us and that's a lot of times why people feel so isolated is oh, i don't mm. have access to any people to to help me and to cue me um but it doesn't have to be like that you still have access to people it's just in different channels yeah. and so maybe that's what you do it's like hey i've got this super reliable um co-worker i'm going to check in with them through the days because i know that they are like super productive i'm not feeling productive so i'm gonna yeah. ask if they'll mentor me or i keep missing meetings because i'm i don't have that person walking to the conference room that means i need to be better about my my um calendar notifications or something but yeah mm -hmm. it really comes back to you that um this isn't anybody else's problem to solve except for yours now you can and should collaborate with your coworkers and your manager um, to make sure that the infrastructure is also working well, that there's a good policy in place, there's good rituals, there's good tools in place that will help empower you. Um, but at the end of the day, if it's if something's not going well, then it's your opportunity to say what's not mm. going well and what am I going to do about this? Because again, you're a self manager now, and uh, that's a that's a big weight and a big responsibility for a lot of people. But it's also super exciting like don't get so you know um mm. bummed out and thinking oh now it's all up to me like that's not fair no it's all up to you like you're in control and so you're in control you, your owner exactly like you're yeah. you're the one in charge and that's awesome so if you're feeling a slump in the middle of the day guess what you can do whatever you want you can go take a shower you can go for a run you can do jumping jacks. <laughs> like, it's up to you and nobody's going to tell you what to do and nobody's going to think that your lunch stinks and nobody's going to laugh at you when you're doing jumping jacks like it's up yeah. to you so i yeah. love that i love it's a win. that laurel and you know you're, you're and you're speaking to kind of like the humanity of this opportunity for organizations right to let their people know that be comfortable in your own space and take ownership of it and carve your work around your life, not your life around your work. 
Yeah, ex exactly. Like if you were the boss, right? You're the CEO and you could yeah. design your work environment and the culture of the company to be whatever you wanted it to be. What would you do? And then yeah. now say, well, now you are. You may not be the CEO of the company, but you're the CEO of your department in the office. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do whatever you want. Redesign so, your space. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a big, big, big believer of that. My uh, yeah. career way back when, right out of college, actually started in interior design. And wow. so I'm, I'm super big believer in the power of our environment on our psychology. And so mm. I think, man, design a space that you love. Like, I mean, who's going to laugh at your kitten posters in your cubicle? Nobody. Nobody's going to see them. So yeah. plaster your office with things that make you happy, that inspire you. Like, you know, the scents and the smells and the colors mm. and like whatever inspires you and motivates you and, and gets you into a headspace that really produces great output. Do it. That's mm. the best part of, I think, one of the best parts of working from home or Laurel, I wherever love you that. are. I love that. Man, y'all, Laurel has dropped so many great gems. <laughs> you know, Dinesh is saying, I always say there's no substitute for hard work. We keep talking about smart work and that's good. Not everyone is born with great, great, great matter, but hard work is something that can be in inculcated over time. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Totally. I love that. Gina is saying it's the human capital that needs to be highlighted and valued to your point, Laurel. You know, Kimberly is saying when you use your strengths and creativity, it helps you to excel in your career. What do you think about that, Laurel? Agree? Oh, of course. And that's, <laughs> um, I mean, this circles back to being your, the, um, leveraging the human potential, right? Like that mm. creativity, what makes you, you is really what makes you unique and valuable as part of this culture, as part of your role. Like what value are you bringing to the table and yeah. what are you going to do differently and how are you going to innovate? Like that's, that's what it's all about. So, um, and again, that critical thinking and that proactivity of identifying Mm. what makes you uniquely valuable and then proposing that to your um to your manager or to another department that's saying hey i can help because i have this unique skill set that's incredibly valuable and those those emotional intelligence skills are part of remote work right like you're yeah. thinking through things on your own independently and proposing a solution and the, i mean yeah whether we're talking about remote work or future of work or just how to do great in your job the answers really all circle back to the same points yeah yeah you know i, I what are some companies on your radar that are doing remote work right oh that's a tough question um <laughs> a couple of months ago it was a much cleaner list <laughs> um now it's everybody's just doing their best and that's yeah. okay um so i think some great examples of fully distributed companies that are 100 percent remote don't have any um physical office space at all uh, my favorite examples are envision i think they've done a great job mm. automatic does well buffer is, is like the king of culture i think yeah. um, so those are our pretty classic examples. However, they get so much attention. And I think it's equally as important to recognize that there's tons and tons of enterprises out there that have been doing remote work um, under the name of telecommuting, right? Or yeah. telework since the 80s and 70s. Wow. Like, And so um, like Dell is massively remote work friendly. I mean, mm. it uh, uh, over 50%. I mean, amazing. Wow. Um, Microsoft, uh, incredible, incredible work at Microsoft. Um, and uh, like Hilton, General Electric, uh, they're all remote friendly. Like everybody, a lot of the enterprises already are remote friendly to a certain extent. They just haven't been very oh. open about it. And now they are. And so now we'll be able to see, um, have more access to their learnings and more access to their their opportunities mm. as this all continues to move forward. Laura, I love that. I love that. Shouting out some companies that have been doing it great for years now. So shout out to Victor, who's a student from UNC Chapel Hill. He's saying great talk. He's definitely going to check out StreamYard and probably try to do a LinkedIn Live as well. So he's loving our LinkedIn Good. Live. Shout out to Mimi. She says exactly. It's okay to give yourself a break sometimes. We should also lower our expectation, uh, expectations of others because we have no idea 
how this pandemic is impacting other others people's lives. People first, be kind, hashtag love that Mimi. You know, David said, I just told my bro I need to spend 1500 to do redo my office and get an up my interior design game. So shout out to you, Laurel, <laughs> for inspiring David. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, and there's, I mean, not just for fun, but it's really critical. I mean, so yeah. businesses put tons and tons of money and investment into corporate interior design um, yeah. for ergonomics and for uh, just psychology and, and motivation and for uh, client experience. Like there's so much that happens there and they invest a lot of money into making sure that the lights are the right brightness and the temperatures and the correct yeah. in the room and that your screen is far enough away from your desk. But we don't know about any of that. We just walk into the office and sit down and start working. And so, I, I hope that there will be a surge <laughs> of home office awareness. Like how do you need to set up an ergonomic office? How do you need to set up um, mm. a, an office that is compliant with off office safety and health regulations? Because none of that is happening right now and that's completely right. illegal. Yeah, so we definitely need to to have a, a, a renaissance, of, if you will, of this awareness. And yeah, I think we're going to see some seriously pimped out spare bedrooms here in the next <laughs> few months. <laughs> and I think also some uh, amazing innovation um, in the tech space in terms of to support remote workers from a productivity standpoint, too. I right? was thinking, of, yeah, when you were talking about your big tech course earlier, that's what I was thinking. Like, there yeah. is no better time to be in tech than right now. It's We are going to see an absolute explosion of tech and software over the next six months, one year, yeah. three years. It's just going to be massive. The more and more and more tools that come out, the more that it will inspire new ideas. And I mean, the next phase of our entire um, existence in, in the tech world is going to be about exactly what's happening right near now is how do we bring humans together from mm. various locations into a, a single experience and how do we just unify that human experience on a tech platform i love that i love that laura laura you are amazing i you know the community the unleashing the future of our community utfow community is loving you shout out if you're interested in getting into tech check out our break into big tech.com course that i'm doing with my boy john marty laurel i want to ask you you know where can people find more find more about your work right Distri with distribute consulting yeah, well, obviously, you're welcome to follow me here on LinkedIn. Um, I'm the only Laurel Farr, so it's easy to find me. <laughs> but, um, so LinkedIn is great. Um, I'm also on Twitter. You're welcome to visit our website, which is distributeconsulting.com. Um, there's all, I'm also the founder of the Remote Work Association. So if you're Woo! a remote work advocate, you can go to remoteworkassociation.com and get connected with other advocates and thought leaders over there. Um, yeah, there's there's no shortage of ways to find me. <laughs> Definitely connect with Laurel. She is a master at her craft and she's incredibly passionate about the remote work revolution. So check out, check her out, check out her website and make sure to connect with her on LinkedIn. So Laurel, you know, the Unleash in the Future Work community has loved you. I would love to get, you know, what are your parting words for our community and people who really want to effectively manage their career as re now remote workers? <laughs> Yeah, I think the theme of what I've just pulled out of this this uh, long conversation together is that we just need to capitalize on our um, our human potential by mm. being innovative, right? Think critically, be self-aware, um, take time to really brainstorm and identify gaps, whether it be in your industry or in your role mm. or in your office or you know all of these different things that we've talked about, like really respect that process of identifying gaps, creatively identifying solutions, proposing and rolling out the solution, and then mm. cycling back and, and reevaluating and going through that, that process of innovation over and over and over, whether it be a really small thing like, well, I'm, you know, finding myself snacking too much in my home office, or it's something really, really big, like my company is about to shut down, how can I help? Like, re regardless of what scale mm -hmm. you're talking, that process of of just thinking and designing and brainstorming is something that nothing else can do. That is uniquely human. And, and if we mm. capitalize on that, then we'll see great results. And there's never a time that we've needed it more. Our, our country and our, our world is in a lot of trouble and in a lot of danger. And we need people to be innovative and brave and proactive to help propose solutions. 
You heard it here first, y'all. Capitalize on your human potential. Thank you so much, Laurel, for being on the Unleashing the Future of Work UTFOW live online podcast. If you're listening and tuning in right now and you're interested in sponsoring or being a guest on the UTFOW, a guide podcast, make sure to check out our website, utfow.com, to sponsor and become a guest. Or reach out to me if you have any feedback on potential ideas for future episodes. I love you all, UTFOW community. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for welcoming our amazing guest, Laurel Farr, who is brilliant at what she does. So make sure to check her out. With that said, peace, love, and see you tomorrow on another episode of UTFOW, Unleashing the Future of Work, live online. All right, y'all. Peace. (laughs)